Hey everybody, my name's B, and welcome to a little The Maw update. Now, if you don't know, The Maw is my beautiful computer right here. Holy cow, this thing is awesome. If you want to find the parts list, it's going to be in the description. This computer is freaking awesome, and we have some upgrades to do to it. I'm going to add some parts, but first off, we're going to do something cool. Now, uh, my motherboard is, I'm sorry, you can't really see it because of the reflectiveness of the glass here, but my motherboard is the uh, Asus ROG Rampage 5 <laughs> Edition 10. Big name. Basically, the best motherboard you can possibly get. It's an X99 motherboard with like literally every feature you would ever need. Comes with all kinds of stuff, including this thing called a DAC. Now, if you don't know what a DAC is, uh, it is essentially... Uh, it takes your audio processing off of where all the crap is going around here where, you know, there's tons of electrical signals that are uh, interfering with it. It takes your audio processing and makes it, uh, just takes it externally. Now what this is made to go in is a five and a quarter inch bay, which is essentially where your disk drive would go about here, but this computer doesn't have one. Uh, I mean, it technically could, but I think it's stupid anyways. I, I don't even remember the last time I used a disk drive. Um, so I decided, hey, I just stick it right here on top of my subwoofer. I'm not sure exactly how good this DAC is, but it seems to be pretty dang awesome as far as I hear. Uh, we got a mic input, a headphone output, and a one of those bigger, I think it's three and a half inch, whatever it is. No, that's three and a half, three and a half millimeter. And I don't know what that is, maybe five and a quarter, I think it was. And then we got a little volume knob here. Essentially, so essentially this just hooks up with a six pin PCIe connector, same stuff you use to plug in your graphics card. And then you take your audio uh, output right there. It basically just externalizes your audio processing power. Now this thing is pretty freaking big. I actually already took it apart, but I'm gonna take it apart again just to show you guys sort of what's actually inside this guy. Alright, so here is the internals. So you can see the audio connector there, power connector there, and that's all that's inside. It's actually very thin. Like, you can see there's probably a good inch gap between the bottom and where the PCB actually starts here. And then it's only, you know, about as thick as that six pin connector all the way across. So I was thinking maybe in the future we can actually make our own enclosure for this and make it like, you know, that thick <laughs> instead of that thick. Uh, because it is really thick and really huge. Uh, the only problem is you kind of got this front panel here that, you know, looks good and stuff. Maybe I can make my own. I don't know. Maybe I can make something out of wood. I mean, I, I know someone that actually owns a wood shop, so that'd be pretty sweet. I just kind of wanted to show you guys, though, because I'm loving how these new PCBs are, where it's just pure black against the back. Now, normally you'd have, you'd actually see some of the traces and stuff, and you can kind of see, like, the indentations and stuff of them but it's really not bad, like, at all. And, I don't know, I really hope people keep that up. It's really nice. So you may have already noticed what my problem is here. Um, we're gonna have to make a modification. Now, because this DAC is sitting external to the case, normally we could just route the cables up to about that location and everything would be fine. But, since it's outside the case, we really don't have any way to get the cables out of there. Now, I know you can't really see too well back here, but uh, basically the only way we could get the cables out if I took out one of these PCI brackets, which is where the graphics card sort of uh, goes into. Uh, I hope you can see that pretty well. Um, but I think that looks super trashy from the front. If we have cables just coming out, if we like took one of those out, I think it would look super trashy. So what we're going to do, we're going to go down here by the power supply. If you can see that just to the just to the left, I think uh, you can see that there's sort of a blank spot. Uh, now that is where the sort of cable management area on the other side of the motherboard tray is, and that's exactly where. Well, it's in the basement, I should say, uh, and it's exactly where we can. Sorry, the camera battery died right there. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I don't know what the crap I'm gonna be doing right now. I could go with one fan attached to the radiator, um, it's really weird, and I, maybe I can attach one fan up here to uh, put air into the CPU cooler and stuff, or I mean not the CPU cooler, I mean like the whole area here, the motherboard, the graphics card, everything like that, 
and just have one fan cooling radiator, I mean, it'll work, but it's not ideal. And I don't know how much heat this thing is going to generate. You know what I mean? Um, I honestly don't know what I'm do, what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to leave this for a part two. So thank you guys so much for watching today. I, know, I don't know if I'm even in focus whatsoever, but hey, thanks for watching. <sighs> Catch you in the next one. actually drill a hole in the middle and then we can route our cables outside of that middle up to this guy now <laughs> I've already bought a PCIe extension and um, I'm gonna be actually upgrading the cables here one day soon I also forgot to mention because right now I just have the RM750 power supply of course there uh, and it has some really nice just flat black cables um, which is awesome really awesome but I think they could look even better if we got some custom cables I kind of want to keep this very neutral color scheme uh, with the exception of the actual RGB lights that is gonna be you know changing constantly I change it like pretty much every day just because it's really fun to mess around with um, and we're also gonna be switching out this for a liquid cooler because we're not getting the performance I want and we're gonna swap out some fans because uh, I'm, I've been using these Fractal Design Venturi fans um, they're the HP ones and they're awesome, but one this top one started making a ticking noise, and it's really freaking annoying. Um, and I've also had to take out that rear exhaust fan because I actually took it from the Dark Rock, uh, Dark. Wait, no, Be Quiet Pure Rock cooler. <laughs> it was a 120 millimeter Be Quiet fan. I put it in the back there. I loved it so much, but I had to get rid of it for the blue build that we did uh, recently which I've actually lost some footage on, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to complete the showcase video on that, sadly. Alright, so we're here in Premiere. We're about to render a file, so I'm going to go ahead and queue that up to be rendered. And once it starts, give it a second. Uh, we actually have Cam, oops, sorry. We have Cam, which is by NZXT. This is a great monitoring software. It shows you uh, your CPU temperature, CPU load, graphics temperature, graphics load, your RAM and all that junk, all your drive space. It shows so much stuff and it is seriously a great monitoring software. Um, so once the audio finishes out coding here... So the last revision of the MAW actually had the graphics card and the CPU water cooled with some all-in-one coolers. Um, and it worked great. The temperatures were so low and it was amazing. The problem is noise was high, especially because of that graphics card. Um, and I kind of wanted to just move to air cooling just because everyone was using liquid coolers. I thought air cooling was going to be great, but as great as that air cooler is, literally Dark Rock Pro 3, awesome cooler with this 6900K, um, which is an eight core CPU with the newest X99 processors. It's idling at 39 degrees Celsius. Like, that is insane uh, for some idle temperatures. I mean, like, it, not insane, but, like, it's it's pretty bad. Um, and the graphics card is actually really good. I really like the graphics card. It does get pretty noisy under full load, but how often is it really under full load? You know what I mean? Um, but you can see here, we have cam monitoring all the temperatures and everything. You can see the CPU load, CPU temperature, Graphics load, graphics temperature, and we got uh, Premiere Pro open up here, and we're going to go ahead and export a file, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Once the audio starts encoding here, and we get the actual render started, you'll watch the temperatures start to skyrocket upwards. Now, because of the way H.264 encodes, it doesn't utilize all of the threads of our processor. This has 8 cores and 16 threads and it uses about 80 to 90 percent of the CPU which is still really good. Uh, it's overclocked to 4 gigahertz but that is about as high as I can possibly go without messing with the voltages or anything on that cooler. It just it, it gets really hot. It gets about to 79 uh, degrees or so and if you go into this advanced menu here you can see this orange is the temperature and the uh, gray here is the load and you can see under all of our processing uh, cores that um, the load is distributed evenly on each of them and it's all about 70 or 80 uh, maybe 90 percent on all the cores which is good um, but it's just kind of weird that it doesn't use all the cores I mean it fully utilized my 4790k all those cores but um, 
as as this goes on as the whole thing heats up and everything it does get very hot and my cpu does get past about 85 degrees sometimes especially on some of the cores are slightly hotter than others as you can see here this one is a little bit hotter than that one etc um, and the graphics really doesn't get used that much in h.264 encoding i mean you can see sometimes this actually glitches out so this probably isn't showing the accurate load um, but it usually stays around 30 percent load in the graphics and the fans don't even kick on so you can tell about how much load that's under but i'm i'm i want to overclock i want to overclock this processor even more so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and slap a liquid cooler on there it's going to be the one i was using before the kraken x61 i believe is the model and we're going to slap some be quiet fans in there um but that's going to be all let me go ahead and get to the next step So I've taken the side panels off and unplugged the monstrous amount of cables that was in the back of this PC. And I just wanted to show you guys my cable management. I don't even know if I really showed it in my showcase video of building the Ma. But now that we're making Ma version 3.1, I'm just going to show you. Look at this awesome cable management. It's all just like flat and delicious. It's so good. <laughs> so I actually have this sound dampening foam. This one's not stuck to anything. But there is sound dampening foam on all sides of these hard drives um, because the hard drives are by far the loudest thing in the system. And you can see here, this little area here is where we're going to be drilling that hole. And you can see here's the bit here. We'll have a pretty good size hole, but still a pretty good size area around it. So it's not going to be infringing on anything and it's not going to look really weird from this side whatsoever. You can see both our SSDs, that's our fan controller there. I actually want to get completely custom cables. I want to get a, um, I was thinking of getting the RM1000X, uh, you know, 1000 watt power supply because I want to have enough room for expansion in the future and to be on the top of that efficiency curve. If you've watched any of my power supply unboxings, you'll know what that is. Um, but basically, I just want to be using the least energy possible getting the max <laughs> performance which is kind of ridiculous considering the components i have in here uh i just like to be a little bit more energy efficient you know what that means but here's all those cables look at that disgusting so first things first i'm gonna go ahead and put on all the fans that go in here and i'll be right back with you
So due to some clearance issues, I wasn't able to get all four pins inside for the bottom fan. So basically, um, these fans mount using these pins here. There we go. So they use these pins with a little rubber washer in between right here. Uh, but basically you stick that through um, where the washer would be uh, is essentially the wall that is connected to your case. The rest of it goes through the fan and sort of holds the fan in place here. Um, but you can see that down here, the little bracket right here is actually in the way. Now there was a bracket on top here where my hard drive goes to give you a little perspective. Um, that was there. I actually removed that, but apparently there's like a second um, little majigger here. And so I unscrewed that a little bit and now I don't know where else it's screwed in, but I cannot get that thing out. So I don't know what's going on, but it's just barely blocking that hole right there. I can't quite get this in there. Um, so I'm just going to mount it on the top two and see how it goes. If not, I can maybe switch since this is like you can switch any corner out. Maybe I can just screw in the bottom two. Who knows?